Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Muhammad Osama and we are talking about hip joint specifically and this lecture we're going to talk about the structure of the hip joint. Previously we talked about the bones uh, which are actually are involved in the makeup of the hip joint including the ilium, ischium, pubis and femur and in this lecture we are specifically going to talk about the structure of the hip joint which includes the acetabulum which is the concave bony partner, the femoral head which is the convex bony partner and the acetabular labrum and the joint capsule. So let's start off with hip joint. What is actually a hip joint? So it is one of the, it is the actually the most proximal of the lower extremity joints and it is one of the largest joints in our body. Uh, knee joint is perhaps the largest one and this is the second largest and it is actually a ball and socket joint. Another type of ball and socket joint in our body is the glenohumeral joint also known as the shoulder joint. Being a ball and socket joint it is one of the most highly mobile joints in our body but it is also stable as compared to the shoulder joint. Ball and socket joint structure provides hip joint with a three degree of freedom movement uh, and because of which it can uh, perform movements in all three planes and all three axes and as well as circumduction. So now as it is a ball and socket joint so it has one uh, concave partner and one convex partner. So the convex partner is actually the rounded and convex shaped femoral head and the concave partner is the concave shaped acetabulum which is like a depression or a cavity. Unlike shoulder, as I already mentioned, hip is very stable and therefore it sacrifices a little bit of a if its range of motion but as I already mentioned that it is a ball and socket joint so yet it is once again a very highly mobile joint. It exhibits freedom of movement in all three axes and planes. Now talking about the hip joint structure, there are two uh, Inominate bones which are connected anteriorly uh, at the symphysis pubis and they are connected posteriorly uh, not with each other but they are connected posteriorly to the sacrum via the uh, sacroiliac joint and that sacrum is also connected with the caucus which is also known as the tailbone. So these four bones which is the two hip bones or two inominate bones or two uh, uh, hip bones these along with sacrum and coccyx is collectively known as the pelvis or the pelvic girdle. Now there are different morphological shapes of the pelvis, the most common being the android and gynecoid. The android pelvis is uh, usually found in males and gynecoid is found in females and the gynecoid uh, pelvis is broader than the android pelvis and it has a uh, bigger pelvic inlet and outlet for, which is uh, functionally suitable for the birth of a child and it is also important to note that when we say pelvis this does not include femur. The hip joint includes femur and acetabulum both but when we say pelvis uh, exclusively then it does not include femur. Now as already mentioned that we have a convex and concave bony partner and the concave bony partner is the acetabulum. So let's take a look at the acetabulum which is actually a cavity like structure and the orientation of acetabulum is that it faces forward or it faces anteriorly, outward or laterally and downward or inferiorly. So if this is the acetabulum it faces anteriorly, laterally and inferiorly. A malaline acetabulum does not adequately cover the femoral head and often causing chronic dislocation and osteoarthritis or chronic hip dysplasia. Now talking about the acetabulum, uh, there is an angle which is known as the center edge angle or the angle of Wiberg and the angle of acetabular antiversion which are the two different angles of the hip joint which are specifically the angles of the acetabulum. And they describe that how much coverage the acetabulum provides the, to the femoral head and thus it relates to the stability of the hip joint because of the shape and orientation of the bony partner specifically the acetabulum. 
the unloaded acetabulum as i already mentioned in the previous series of lecture that it is smaller in diameter as compared to the femoral head which makes it uh, very shallow and for that reason we have the acetabular labrum which deepens the cavity for the femoral head moreover uh, in the unloaded position the femoral uh, the head is bigger than the acetabulum but as the uh, a person goes into a weight bearing position and the acetabulum is loaded then it actually expands because uh, it is made up of three different bones and it deforms to adopt to the femoral head viscoelastically so it also has a viscoelastic nature in itself as you can see here as we already mentioned in the previous lecture as well that it is a composition it has uh, because of the three different bones which has the ilium the ischium and the pubis now as you already mentioned that uh, acetabulum is not as deep as it should be and because of its shallow nature we need acetabulum labrum to increase the size of the cavity for receiving the femoral head and to increase the stability of the hip joint so acetabulum labrum itself is extremely important to the proper functioning of the hip joint and because as I already mentioned it decreases the it increases the depth of the joint cavity hence providing stability and unlike capsular tissue which is made up of collagen labral tissue is made predominantly of fibrocartilage moreover extensive penetration of vascular tissue and blood vessels throughout the anterior labral or the acetabular labral structure suggests that there is a greater healing potential in the acetabulum which is a good thing and you can see here now this here is the acetabular labrum which is surrounding the rim of the acetabulum and acetabular labrum is actually deepening the socket of the acetabulum once again you can see here that this is the normal acetabulum and it is further deepened and uh, by the acetabular labrum now this is actually the acetabular labrum which is actually attached with the uh, rim of the acetabulum thus providing stability and deepening the socket of the acetabulum to receive the femoral head the labrum plays a role in containing the femoral head in extremes of motion particularly in flexion and that is the role its role in stability and it also acts as a load bearing structure during flexion there is potential for rotational instability and hypermobility of a hip joint with labral deficiencies because of its stabilizing role which actually is lost with its deficiency or its injury or its tear one of the stability factors in the hip joint is the vacuum which is produced in the acetabular fossa which sucks in the uh, femoral head and keeping it in its place but whenever there is venting of the labrum or whenever there is a deficiency of the labrum this vacuum phenomena is lost and that also decreases the uh, stability of the hip joint now another important structure is the hip joint capsule which is like a sleeve and surrounds the hip joint and it is very important because it is very strong thick and covers the hip joint in a cylindrical fashion providing protection and stability it attaches proximally just around the lip of the acetabulum as we can see here and distally to the neck of the femur as we can see here it forms a cylindrical sleeve that encloses the joint and most of the femoral neck though some of the portion is deficient and that is uh, how you can see here in this picture as well it is thickened anterior superiorly where predominant stresses occur and is relatively thin and loosely attached posterior posterior inferiorly it is also reinforced by the caps uh, ligaments of the hip including including the uh, iliofemoral, ischiofemoral and pubofemoral ligaments. Uh, the second bony partner that I already mentioned uh, in the hip joint is the uh, femoral head which is the convex bony partner and uh, it forms two-thirds of a sphere and articular cartilage specifically the hyaline cartilage is covering the femoral head and it is thickest on the medial central surface surrounding the fovea fovea is actually a depression in the center of the femoral head where the uh, 
ligament of the head of the femur or also called as ligamentum teres attaches. The hyaline cartilage is thinnest towards the periphery when we talk about the femoral head. The orientation of the femoral head as compared to the acetabulum which we talked about the acetabulum is facing outwards anteriorly and inferiorly whereas the femoral head is oriented via the femoral neck in a direction which is inclined superiorly, anteriorly and medially and that's how these two surfaces meet together to form a hip joint and there is an increased exposure of the femoral head anteriorly which because of the anterior orientation of both of these components which allow a greater degree of flexion range of motion as compared to extension. That's all about the basic structure of the hip joint. We are also going to take a look at the ligaments of the hip joint and the muscles of the hip joint uh, in the upcoming lecture. So stay tuned and watch other lectures on scardia.com and thank you very much for watching.